So this is the yolk that I'm gonna be copying and it's one that I made. Get worn like this. So it's a great tool. Um, not many people have them anymore. They've lost, <laughs> lost their place in our society, but I'm trying to bring them back. <laughs> Welcome to Stockman Original. I'm Max Ledoux. This is the original Brian Stockman. <laughs> Today, we are going to be using traditional tools to make a yoke. I'm gonna start with a fro and this log, this piece of basswood, which is light wood and it's springy and it's fairly strong. We have the fro and the fro club. And <clears throat> the fro's in there. The idea is to drive it in there and give it a little <coughs> tweak like that and voila so what I'm gonna do set one of these aside I have a pencil I'm gonna lay this right on top because this yoke works out really well I'm gonna trace it and copy it I'm not worrying about getting it too exact on the drawing part because it's all gonna be hatchet and axed off. Things might change as I go, but this will get me started. Now, if you didn't have one to trace and you were gonna try making one of these yourself, you just draw a center line down the middle and, you know, hand sketch it on that way. Okay, so here we go. Watch out, Jesse Carr. <clears throat> Actually, it might be good if you were out. Jesse Carr, you are banished. Banished. Bye, puppy. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to say hello and got anything to eat. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna. This is basically hewing in a sense, though I'm not making a beam. Oh, so this is a, a carpenter's hatchet and they're used for roughing beams out or sway braces and different things. So what I'm doing with it is what it's made to do. This has been my go-to for a long time. It's just a beautiful weight and it sharpens up real nice. I got it for like $3. <laughs> <laughs> Antiquing. Now, people don't put much value on these things, but boy, I do. And I want something with good steel, find an antique version. Because they were actually using these when it was made. And even the guy making it knew what it was for. And if you're careful, you can follow a line pretty good with it. And you don't have to be a powerhouse with it. The ax has got a weight to it and the weight is part of the tool. It's what drives it. You just have to control it. Keep it out of your leg. <laughs> Every time you pick one of these things up, that should be one of the first things that go through your mind. How many stitches will it take to close the wound? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like to start low and get rid of some of that wood, and then you can move your way up, and you're just taking little bites that turn into big bites. Rest. <laughs> Hopefully, some of these rests will end up in the final film so that people don't have to think that they can just <laughs> say, wow, that Brian uses a machine. That's <laughs> 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 how you do it without breaking a sweat. Yeah, next to a wood stall. <laughs> All right. Well, this is getting close, folks. Hmm. You know, the ax works pretty good, but you can save some of that fine tuning for the draw knife, which we'll get to in a minute. We've got it pretty much roughed out as far as I want to go with the ax this way. Now I want to take and cut the, the arms so that they're up to the top of the top of the yoke. And so I just kind of roughly mark it out like so. So, here we go. Benjamin. Ba, 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 ba. It's the Benjamin shoe. What I'm gonna do is take the draw knife and clean up this surface just a little bit. I'm actually going to use, brace yourself, a measuring device. 18, half, and an eighth. Okay, 
and that is the center. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna run a little center line down this way, just for fun. This is what I generally do to ensure balance. Just use a stick. So I've got a kind of a rough idea of what I wanna do here. I'm going to grab a chisel, gouge, be precise. Ooh, ooh, that's a nice, that's a nice one too. But I wanna try this one first, cause it's a dandy. This is, uh, what, what are we at? Tool number four, right? Uh, this is a, a gouge, it's a really nice one. Witherby, to Gooden. Yeah, they make really nice tools and great steel. It's good and sharp. And uh, the other, I'm gonna use a variety of chisels. Usually they're Swiss made gouges. This is one of those. This is a uh, like a bent gouge for bowls and so forth. It's got a little bit of a sweep this way. And it's got a nice bite, a lot of uh, cutting, cutting edge there. You cut across grain Cross grain, it cuts good, for the most part, easier. You have more control over it. And what I'm gonna do here is, my objective is to cut as deep as I can across grain, create a pocket here, and then I can come in to it, you know, like that, and have it'll have a release yeah. point. If you don't have the oh. that cut there, and you're really getting in it, you, you could get a splint going. that yeah. would take it out beyond where you want it to be. <laughs> yeah, right, right. so that's where we're at with that. I probably just got done saying that I wasn't gonna use them out too much, but I found a knot here, and that tends to slow things down. Even in basswood, a knot is hard. So, what I've got here, is a really cool mallet. I have a tree on the lower part of the property. It's an oak tree and it grows these crazy burls. Like one limb will be, have a burl, a burl, a burl, a burl, a burl, a burl. And it looked like a clip poodle. <laughs> so the handle to this mallet is actually part of the whole, I mean, they're all one piece. So this is the size of the limb and this is the burl that grew on it. And you can see how the limb comes out the other side right here. That burl is, the wood in that is knitted together in such a way that it doesn't split out on you. It'll last for a long, long time. So it's a really cool, really cool tool. Beauty thing about that knot is, even though the, the knot is kind of hard to carve through, and when this is done, it will be gone anyway. It's gonna disappear pretty soon because it died and the tree kept growing over it after the limb fell off. But what's left behind is a, is a bit of a swirl to the grain, which adds strength to it when you're carrying heavy loads. A little extra strength here and there in the wood is a good thing. And so, I'm going to start cutting out the shoulders here, hollowing it out. So this is uh, roughed out. We'll probably come back when I, after I do the uh, neck hole and try it on, <laughs> take out some of the rough spots and uh, smooth it up a bit. But I'm gonna flip it over now and use the draw knife and shave it down. So yeah, now I got it set up. So I'm gonna use the draw knife to shape down the outside, thin it out, lighten it up, clean it up. Draw a knife on a piece of wood like bass or pine or something, there's a lot of fun because you lose, you move a lot of wood pretty fast. So fast in fact that you really need to keep checking your thickness. See how I'm using it at an angle? Because I've got a, a bit of a, what they call a cat face or an old knot covering kind of thing. The grain is switchy. So if I come, th come at it straight like that, it gets under, some of the grain it cuts fine, some of it gets under because it's going in a different direction and it 
rips it up, makes a cavity deeper than you want. So if you cut it at a skew like that, it slices it and you kind of can get more control mm. through it all. I'm going to take it out and have a look about. So now, working on the bottom half, ah, the belly of the beast. To the shape of this hut, it's beveled down. One side of the uh, blade is flat, and I use that for the most part, like a plane travels across the surface on that flat, and the wood peels up from the angle, you know, the bevel cut. But it's it's not a hard bevel, it's kind of a rounded bevel. So I can flip it over and kind of use it like my bent gouge that I was using earlier to scoop out hollows, you know, inside curves like this. I'm gonna leave this a little bulky to start until we cut the neck out and then I can tell if I need to take more wood out, I'll have it to take. If, if I carve this back too close, I'll be done right there. So we'll leave that just like that. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Now comes the ba -ba -ba -ba, cutting the neck hole. That looks like it'd work for me. <laughs> yeah, that's a. That's the middle of it. Well, I'm gonna use a saw. You wanna go outside, chase chipmunk? Nope. When she looks away, it's like, no, it doesn't interest me. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna carve it round, but I'm getting rid of the bulk of the wood with the saw. See that ain't wow. that nice. Duh. <clears throat> oh, it's already pretty good. The only thing biting me is right here in the corners where I knew it would. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But on um, shoulder whip feels good. Oh, this is gonna be a good one. Ha. With it all roughed out like this. From here on in, it's fun because it's where you start putting the, the artsy, mm -hmm. sculpturish sort of touches on it. This is like a new fashion statement. That's yeah. Like start a trend here. I mean, it's, I, know. I can't even feel it. It's like, it's like the you eight. Know. It would be like the 80s all over again with yeah. shoulder pads. <laughs> but I think you can probably feel there's a little bit more that needs to probably come off the corners Just there. A little bit on this side. Yeah. My shoulder's a little lopsided though. I like to planish it off and take the, the high ridges off of the carving, but I like to leave the carved marks in yeah, because cool. nowadays, yeah, you almost have to, to you know, Prove it, it wasn't done on a CNC machine or some damn thing. Mine enemy. <laughs> All right, so this, I think, is good. It will carry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, th this is it, roughed out. I'm gonna clean it up and personalize it for the fellow who wanted it. Yeah. So I had a chance to uh, finish up the yoke. We got it cleaned up and I've got the, I forged out some hooks for the hangers, put the ropes on it and I carved the gentleman's name in it that's gonna own it. And uh, if you guys ever get a chance to check out Wild Fed, Dot com. This fella here tell you a lot. <laughs> anyway, that's it done. Got it all, uh, and I've put a coat of, uh, of linseed oil on it. Send it on its way. <clears throat> so.
Now, if these had something in them, <laughs> you'd find this to be a very handy tool. 